Today is a good day, guys, and that is because we are working on a 1949 white super tow truck. And she is one bad unit, guys. Look at this thing. So we saw this thing on Facebook Marketplace, this giant bumper. It's orange and it's ugly, and we thought, you know what, we have to have this thing. So we went and picked it up. It does not currently run right now. Um, the guy we got it from had it for probably about two years and never did anything with it. But he did say the guy before him did try to get it running and was unsuccessful at that. So I don't know how long it has actually been since this thing has ran, but it has had some interesting work done to it. Uh, so we're gonna try our hand at it. Now this truck would have came probably with like a white 120A or maybe like a 150A. We're not really sure depending on the model of the truck. Um, it is kind of a lighter truck, 19,000 pounds is what it says on the uh, uh, plaque on the inside. Um, but we still kind of have to figure that out. So this does not have the original engine, guys. It has a Chrysler Slant 6 in it. And that is mounted to what we're told is an Eaton transmission. So it'd be a five-speed Eaton transmission. And it also has a three-speed auxiliary transmission. It's a, a Brownie. A Brownie transmission. It has a chain-driven PTO that is running a 20,000-pound Tulsa wench. Don't forget this janky thing up here. Yeah. So this thing right here is... Uh, one of the few awesome custom pieces of work that it has. Um, I don't know why someone would put this on there. It doesn't look like it was put on there too well. Uh, it completely negates the entire slide mechanism on this. So I, we're not really sure what's going on with that. This is probably gonna have to go. And uh, it does have air brakes on it. So in order to tow it, we did have the air or the, the canisters pulled all the way out frees up the brakes allows it to roll really easily we don't know anything about the condition of the brakes they could be completely shot we hear it grinding a whole lot in the back I don't know that might be an interesting one and over here you can see some of the other quality custom work that has been done here I don't know why someone would do fiberglass on this thing but you know they did now the overall condition of this cab really doesn't look all too horrible I mean, all things considered, someone did come through and, and sand it all down, um, but never painted it. It's just, it's kind of just raw. But for the most part, these rockers and everything look really good. There is some holes in the floorboard over here. Some of the custom work that, that was done for the, the transmission and all that. I don't, I don't know what's going on there. But guys, I think she's actually going to clean up really nicely once we dig into it. And up here, you can see the big, ugly part of it. This is custom body work done by years and years and years of hard work or a sledgehammer. Not really sure, but I kind of like it. It gives it character, you know? She's got, she's got lots of battle wounds. Wanna open the hood and show us what's inside? All right. So like I said, Chrysler Slant 6. It's the industrial version, so it'd be like a 220. It's the, the bigger one. Um, it does turn over, so we did actually pull on, on the pulley down there and got it to spin a little bit. So we do know that is freed up, but other than that, there's a lot of uh, questions about this truck. So you can see it has an alternator right here. It has been converted to 12 volts. Um, at least that's what it seems like. But you know, uh, the coil up here is clipped. It's it's interesting. A lot of a lot of interesting things going on here, guys. I wonder if it was a positive ground. Maybe. Who knows? We'll have to find out. Air pump for air brakes. Huge one barrel carburetor. Yeah, it's all <laughs> nasty and junky down in there, too. Does not look like it's been touched in, in quite a while. There's a lot of a lot of gunk on here. A lot of things that would have been touched if someone was trying to get it going have not been messed with. So oil. Oil. Oil looks fine. There's no water in it. It's good. Yeah. Overall guys, I think we're gonna be able to get this thing running. So we're gonna dig into it and see what we can't find. Found a 
air fitting down here, so we're just going to see if it even holds air. Plus, we found the switch to the air horn, so we want to know if it works. Do you hear any leaks? Nothing off the gate right now. Go check around the truck. All right. Alright. <laughs> I hear it. That's released. Barely. It's not enough pressure. Oh, I gotta read the air pressure. Hey, air pressure is going up. Check this out. We are getting air pressure from her. Try the horn. Try the horn. <laughs> that is a that is a loud horn. <laughs> all right. That's all I cared about. <laughs> you happy? I am. <laughs> Something about an air horn. It makes everybody giggle. <laughs> Went ahead and uh, sprayed out. Use some air and cleaned out this uh, interior right here. Cleaned up pretty nicely, can't lie. And also I went ahead and cleaned up this plaque right here. So I don't know if you can even see it on the camera. Oh, maybe you can see it better on the camera. But right there it says WB-20 and it says 19,000 pounds, uh, 110 horsepower on the engine. Um, and then also right here you can see much, well maybe better, WB-20. So that's the model of this truck, WB. And I did find out that WB has this right here. This is only in WB and then this big air box right up here. That is also unique to the WB series of these trucks. So this is 1949 and WB last model was in 1949. And then also in 1949, they switched over to the WC. It's pretty cool. So we went ahead and uh, hooked up a battery to it and turned on this little ignition switch right here. And we ended up getting power to the coil up there but we can't get nothing to turn with the starter so i'm going to go ahead and climb up underneath this truck and see if uh both wires are connected to the starter or what might be going on under there okay so we got our starter right here and we tapped into this line real quick connected power to it and we are getting power to the battery at least we think the big oh let's see right up in here the big cable is connected right up in here you can barely see it but it's connected up in there so seemingly it should be getting power to the starter so we think that the the starter solenoid is probably bad in this thing all right so since we're getting nothing from the starter and we do know that it's getting power and it's dependent on the start switch in there uh we're just gonna assume the starter's bad so we're gonna go ahead and pull that off and while i'm doing that my dad is gonna go ahead and pull off this carburetor right here and get that all cleaned up so, see you in a second. He's so got the carburetor right here. He's cleaning it out right now. A whole bunch of this came out of it right there. All nasty. And this right here is a starter. And you can see this, this was, I mean, this is only about half of what came out too. A whole bunch of this dropped on my face underneath there. And this thing was smashed up in there. It was stuck. Had to break out the old hammer and long screwdriver. But we'll go ahead and clean this all out, see if we can't get it spinning again. All right, guys, so the starter was completely rusted up solid. We couldn't get it to break free, put some penetrating oil on it, tried to wedge it out of there, but we couldn't get nothing on it short of beating it with a hammer. So we went ahead and got a new starter right here, picked it up from the store, and we also got some new points because down here, let's see if we can see this, these points down here, well, you can't really see them, but the points on there are absolutely fried. So we got some new points for that. So we'll go ahead, throw the stort starter on and throw up on these points. Our starter is back. And also I broke off the rusted through um, exhaust pipe, but that's no big deal. But we got the starter mounted up. We're gonna go ahead and see if she turns over. You guys ready? I'm ready. All right, here we go. <laughs> Nothing? Nothing? Yeah, hit the ignition. Oh, whoa, whoa, it's in gear. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> well, the starter, it definitely works. <laughs> oh, I wasn't ready for that. <laughs> Let's go ahead and... Uh, I got it in neutral. <laughs> Neutral? It's in, it's in neutral. It's very neutral this time. Yeah, okay. There we go. Go ahead, hit it. Hit it. Yeah. yeah. Hey. It sounds bad. It sounds, it sounds decent too. Oh. Huh? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, sounds healthy. Uh-huh. All right. She rotates. She rotates. Okay, let's uh, see if we can get these points lined up. Yeah, go ahead and... Uh, and swap those out. And turn the ignition off. Dude, these points... Yeah, turn the ignition off and disconnect the battery so I don't electrocute myself. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm no fun. But I almost got ran over today. I don't need to get electrocuted. <laughs> All right, we got old points, new points try to show you but I don't think it'll focus on these but these things are done for so I'm gonna go ahead and throw this on there and we'll show you the trick of how to get it spaced out correctly okay so we got our new point down in there I'll probably zoom in on this a little bit but you can see it's just barely off of each other because we got it sitting on top of right here the pointed edge so you want it to stop right there and you put it right on the point and then it's about eighteenths of an inch Right there in between 18 thousandths of an inch in between there so you can see it's just barely off so we got that good to go we're gonna see if it sparks now ready I'm ready Ignition on. Mm -hmm. oh, battery, hang on. battery come on just the battery. rookie mistake okay, here we go. yep hey we're getting spark all right. All right. We went ahead and pulled these plugs, and they look pretty much new. So I think they've definitely been replaced. And I'm gonna go ahead and take a look down inside of these real quick, see if there's anything alarming in there. But it all looks pretty good so far. So I think we're just gonna throw these back in. All right. Spark plugs are back in. Carburetors cleaned up and put back on there. Uh, we do need to find the firing order of this engine, which is one. One five three six two four. Um, so we got number one open right now. I'm gonna be feeling for pressure, um, so we know when it when it's that turn. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ready? I'm ready. Okay, I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, a little too fast. Yeah, but can you do it slower? <laughs> Okay, take three. There you go. Ooh, that's, I just felt air right when it died, or when it stopped, I mean. Try that. Well, like, yeah, right when it stopped it. Was it good pressure? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's got pressure. Cool. Where's the rotor? Uh, right down over there. Rotor. Oh, the rotor's on it. Oh, so we're pointing at number one there. Back on. Okay. All right. Plugs are put back in. Uh, we do have voltage, six volts, so it's 12 to six right here. Um, we got that going to the coil, so we're gonna check this for spark. Go ahead. Um, I do not see. Can I hold it? Okay. Oh, yep. I felt it. <laughs> Did you knew that was gonna happen? <laughs> My son of a. <laughs> Woo! Okay. Got spark. <laughs> yeah, you got six volts right to my thumb. Plug that in the center. <laughs> oh boy, man, you try to run me over, <laughs> you electrocute me. This is a fun. <laughs> the joys of working with your why, dad. <laughs> why do you have your son work with you? <laughs> oh geez, all right. Lesson, life lessons. You can't see the spark, but you can feel it. Oh boy, wake you up real quick, huh? Mm-hmm. All right, now that I've almost been ran over I got electrocuted uh, it is the moment of truth guys I'm gonna go ahead and dump some fuel down this carburetor and we're gonna see if we can't, can't get a sputter out of it okay 
Ready? Yep. All right. Uh huh. A little extra just for good measure. Hey! Hey! hey, hey. We got a little something. A little extra for measure. Yeah, yeah. Just in case. Come on, girl. Oh! Yeah, it's a little janky in there, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, spill it all over the engine just in case. Bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. Here, Here give me that. Pour a little down there while it's turning over. Okay. Well, a few little sputters, but nothing, nothing too convincing. Hey, 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 come on! Oh, yep, it's leaking out of it now. Just running. Yeah. Bottom gasket might be just shot. Getting closer. It's like right when you stop it sputters a little bit. Yeah, I'm wondering if we're losing too much voltage at the coil. Oh, while it's cranking? Huh. Oh. Come on. Hey. Hey, 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 hey. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so we're Okay. We're sucking too much voltage away when we're cranking. Gotcha. So we probably should rewire the switch. Yeah. For ignition separate from the starter. Oh yeah. Huh. All right. Okay. Yeah, we'll do that. And then uh, come back and try again. All right. Yeah, because it's once you stop, cranking. you let go. Once you stop cranking, it provides enough voltage to. That's yep. interesting. Okay. Cool. Well, guys, we got a sputter out of it. <laughs> uh, that's cool. So our oh. theory was that this is running off the same switch that actually cranks the engine over. So we might be losing voltage to this wire here, which is, you know, going to the coil. So we hooked up a cord, just a little workaround right here between that, the alternator. So it's gonna run off something different. So it should have consistent voltage now for when we crank it. So we're gonna go ahead and give this a try. Ready? Yep. Hey, okay, okay. Whoa. Yeah, <laughs> but it's still, it's so firing. It's doing, it's fi losing voltage, it's and that one's losing voltage too. So we're gonna go Go direct to the battery. Direct to battery? Yeah, bypass the switch. Okay. Completely. Because I think that one's probably wired into the same switch. I bet you it is because it goes up through the firewall right there, so it it might not make a difference. But so, it is so it's firing whenever we let off the, the start switch. So once you, you stop providing voltage to the starter, then it wants to fire. So that's why we're just assuming that. It's not getting enough voltage to the coil. 
Okay, so the alternator wire actually runs directly into there, into uh, the starter switch, and then down to the starter. So we just went ahead and grabbed another cord and bypass it completely straight to the battery. Uh, fully test out this theory we got. Pop it off with some gas, but I think she's gonna run, fellas. I think it's looking good. Hey! hey, 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 hey. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, got her running. Got her running. <laughs> ah, it's weird though. Still yeah. got a weird starter cut out. Yeah, that is interesting, huh? Hey. Oh. <laughs> She's running too. Oh, good. All right. Hey, that doesn't sound bad at all. No, let's see if the fuel pump's pumping. All right. Should I feel suction on it somewhere? No pressure. And she runs out of fuel. Woo hoo 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 hoo! <laughs> on. Oh, she stinks. Oh, I bet. That's definitely. That's a long time since it's ran. Engine. Oh yeah. But I don't see a lot of smoke. No, it and it sounded fine. I mean, idled for a little bit, right? Yeah. A little rough. Not quite getting the right, proper let's fuel, see if but we can get the fuel pump working. Yeah, I didn't feel anything sucking from the fuel pump. Well, we got to get fluid in there. So. Go ahead and check this girl out right here. We'll be back. Okay, we got a line hooked up to the carburetor, to the fuel pump, fuel pump clear line so we can see if it's pumping or not. And to our little gas can over here. And it does look like it leaking a little bit, but we're ready to see if the fuel pump is gonna be working or not. Ready when you are, the uh, ignition is not on. Uh, it is now. Okay. Oh yeah. Well. Oh that thing, it's, hey, well it's not, <laughs> this thing is nasty. What? Look at the fuel mixture. It didn't, it didn't suck anything out of the end of this hose, but it's bubbling down in here. And look at that. You can see oh, it's just. pump is nasty. Pump is nasty, yeah. We don't want to use that. Oh, now it's coming out. Because I'm pouring into it. Yeah. Probably oh. a bad fuel pump. Look at that. I bet you it is bad. The amount of the amount of junk that's coming out of this thing. Yeah. Could be clogged, I guess, but can we can we take these apart? Not really. Nope. That one's not rebuildable. All right. Oh, there you go. Probably a bad fuel pump. Well, it's it's pumping. Well, it's but the check valve's not checking. Yeah, it's doing something. Well, bad fuel pump. All right. Next. Next. It, runs. it does run. We have big victories right now. Big victories. Typical though, very typical. Don't know if it's got oil pressure. Oh, that's true. There's a, there's an oil pressure gauge up in here. Yep. Have you seen if it works? 
Wanna start it and see? Yeah. Get this fan out of my way. There we go. Oil pressure gauge. All right. Oh, we got oil pressure. It's building. 20, 30, 25. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, 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 hey. Um, you have gas dripping right down the exhaust pipe. Yeah. Okay. Well, there's not much to it. Well, the exhaust comes right out the bottom, so you can't really avoid it. But. Rather not have a fire. Me too. Sounded good. Yeah. Yeah. The water's we... coming off of the flywheel and... Oh, dude, it's so dirty in there. Clutch. It, it's so dirty. Oh, the clutch spring isn't hooked up, by the way. Oh. I, I had to unhook it to get the starter, and I don't think I... I, didn't, I need to re they had like zip ties around it oh. and then strapped to zip ties so I got I got to find a new place for that but it goes like right past the starter it's it, okay. we, we need to find a new yeah well obviously we got to go through a yeah. lot of stuff <laughs> there's, there's a lot of things it's just the initial this is but you know big victory we got it running we did get it running we oh boy sweet so Fuel pump is bad, um, at least that's what we're assuming, but we did go ahead and uh, get some belts on. So we got a belt on the air pump over here, a belt on the alternator. Now this bracket was in front. We kind of, it was pretty janky, custom made stuff, you know? Um, so we bent it up a little bit, got it kind of fitting right, um, put it on the backside because it was rubbing against this fan right here. Um, we had some extra belts laying around that fit pretty good. We do have a belt rubbing right up over here, just barely. You can see where it was rubbing before. Kind of notched it in a little bit, so not gonna be perfect, but we do want to kind of just test it out, uh, see if this air pump is working. Maybe we'll see if the alternator's charging. Um, yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and start it back up again. Gonna stand back a little bit in case I throw a belt. Oh, hey, you don't have this other wire hooked up. No, I don't. Uh, that seems to be the trick. So. Okay, so we were able to get it running at one point, and then we tried to get it started again, and to no avail. We did put on some belts. And then we tried to start it up again and we couldn't get it to fire. Um, there is some interesting things going on with the ignition. Uh, it was only starting um, after you let off of the start switch, um, which tells us that it was like a voltage issue um, with the ignition. Uh, so we're, we're getting a 12 volt ignition. We do have uh, these plug wires right here, but they're boot plug wires. We need uh, straightforward ones. Um, so we got new ones of those. And then we also got, right down there is the, uh, the old fuel pump. We got a new fuel pump because that thing was just sloshing fuel around. It wasn't actually pumping in either direction. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, put on some new plug wires, put on a new fuel pump and get this ignition put on. Okay, so we were having issues. And we were guessing it was carburetor issues. Wasn't quite getting the right fuel. Um, and also the the seals in this carburetor were absolutely junk. It was leaking all over the place They they were not doing their job at all. So we tried to use them it didn't work. So we went ahead and got some new ones um, But we got that all hooked up cleaned up ready to go the New fuel pump is on we got gas right here, and we also got our new coil. So Totally bypassed this ballast up here that was giving us lots of problems because even if you touched it just a little bit wrong It would stop giving spark. So it was really kind of an issue. So now we're direct 12 volts, ready to go. Come on. Pull the choke out, choke out. 
Yeah. Let's go. Give me a Yeah. Uh-oh. 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 All right, celebrated too early. Doesn't want to run with the choke in. Oh, it's probably just cold blooded. Yeah. We'll pull like maybe halfway or something. Again? Again. Cold. Huh. It's cold. She Can't tricky. Figure it out. Still got. Still full of fuel. Still, I mean, the f we're getting fuel to the carburetor. The carburetor is just not getting fuel into the engine. Yeah. I can open that jet a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that jet opened pretty far already. No. No? No. Oh. I wasn't sure where it goes because I haven't really <clears throat> run it, so. I can give her another crank. A lot of crap clearing out, sounds like, too. Go. That sounds much better. All right. Open that jet up a little bit. She a happy girl. <laughs> this belt's a little sketchy, but oh man. Easy as that. Let's see if it moves? Yeah, let's see if it moves. Brakes work. Front fronts don't. Yeah. Um. Oh yeah, she's rolling and she's moving. Shoot. Look at that.
Temperature gauge is not working. All right, figures. Yeah, shut it down before it gets too hot. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Well, easy peasy, huh? She runs. She runs. Ru she runs and drives. Look at that. Finish the front brakes. Yeah, we pulled out these. Uh, well, put them in, I guess. They were pulled out. The rear brake canisters. They seem to be working fine. Here's a couple air leaks here and there. Yeah, up in, in the cab, the valve, and then there's an air leak up on one of these tubes up over here. But it doesn't seem too horrible. Oh, not bad. I'll tell you what, she looks pretty good. <laughs> you stand back and look at it, just move forward a little bit. Oh, yeah. All right, guys, so she is running right now. She does start up pretty easy. Did have to do a whole bunch of work to it uh, just to get it to that point. Um, you know, rebuilt the carburetor, new fuel pump, new coil, new points, but we got her to a point where she will start up and run right now. So we did just add some water to it. Uh, you can see it's leaking all over the place, but we didn't pressure test it. Um, so don't know exactly if there's any leaks, but everything else just off the basis, uh, didn't see anything leaking like crazy. So nothing off the jump without being under pressure. Um, this air pump right here, is leaking all over the place it has oil coming in it so there's oil lines right here and here that run through it and definitely not sealing up correctly and uh judging by how everything else is on this truck i'm sure the seals are shot but it is building good air pressure now the the brake system is a little iffy these rear brakes don't seem to be working correctly um you know they there's no there's no brake pressure on them so the spring brakes don't work on them um, and when you press on the pedal, they, they don't really seem to do a whole lot. The front brakes do seem to be working though. So we do have some kind of breakage, but there's a lot to dig into with that. We're not exactly sure what's going on with it. And inside here, guys, we do not have a temperature gauge. We do have oil pressure, so that's good. Um, air pressure is looking good. So there's still quite a few things that we need to do on this truck. We have not dug into the PTO at all or the three-speed auxiliary transmission. Those are still stuck in place, but we're not gonna be digging into that in this video. That'll probably be on the next video. Um, but I think for right now, that's that's a stopping point. We're gonna go ahead and uh, drive it over to a place. We're gonna park it and that'll be that. So check this out, guys. It should start up pretty easily. There you go, look at that. Look at that, like a champ. All right, we're gonna go ahead and move this thing over. Um, and that's what will end it. All right, guys, so like I said, there's still quite a bit more work to do on this truck. Um, if this video does pretty well, we'll keep working on it. Um, let us know what you would like to see done with the truck. Uh, I think we're thinking rat rod, but I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Um, but that's about it, guys. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.